All right, guys. Well, welcome to Lesson 10 Problem Set. Um, let's be zoom in and let's get started. Um, we are practicing subtracting of decimals. So, looks like, let's read the directions for the first part. Subtract, writing the difference in standard form. You may use a place value chart to help. So I'm just going to draw a place value chart up in the top right hand corner. And that's just going to help me. This will be our tenths, our hundredths, and our thousandths. Okay, and then we will have our ones over here and our tens over here. Great. So we'll just have that up there. We won't use it every time, but we might need it. If we, if we do, we can look at it and help it visualize. So five tenths minus two tenths. Well, five apples minus two apples. Five minus two is always three. So if we're doing five tenths minus two tenths, it's going to be three tenths. If I think about where the three tenths would be, I can visualize how to write it, and that's going to be 0 0.3. Ooh, this one looks way more challenging. I see more units. I see ones. I see thousands. All right, so we have five ones, nine thousandths, minus two ones. Okay, remember, when we were doing this, what are the like units? Well, ones and ones, right? Well, what's five minus two ones? Well, like the one above us, five minus two is always three, so there's three ones. Did we subtract anything from the thousands? Nope. So that's nine thousands. If I think about that in my place value chart, look up at the top, there was three in the ones place, but there was nine in the thousands, nothing in the tenths, nothing in the hundreds, so I know that this is going to be 300, oops, I'm in the wrong spot, 3.009. Great job. Let me get rid of that so that we can use it again. All right, 700s, we're on C now, 700s, 800s, minus 400s. Again, look for the common unit. Don't allow hundreds and hundredths confuse you. Seven hundredths, well, we didn't subtract anything from there, so theirs are gonna still be the same. Eight hundredths minus four hundredths, well, it's always gonna give us four. Now, let's visualize it. If there's, oh, I've given myself a hundredths place. Seven in the hundredths place, but four in the hundredths place. So if I put, zeros in the places that didn't have digits, I can see it's going to be 700.04 or 700 and 400. Let's quickly erase those digits. All right. 37 thousandths minus 16 thousandths. Well, with this one, you might just want to draw 37. They're both thousandths, so we know we can just subtract. So what's 37 minus 16? Well, that's 21 thousandths. But we're going to use the place value chart so that we know how to regroup. So if we put 21 in the thousandths place, we can know that 2 goes in the hundredths because we're regrouping. And then there would be 0 tenths. So it would be 0 0.021. Great. You can come on in, Barb. Um, now we're going to move on to question 2. And with this part, let's read the directions. We are solving using the standard algorithm. So that means we're just going to be stacking and subtracting. But be careful, because we want to make sure that there's, when we have to regroup, we regroup. So 1.4 minus 0 0.7. Ooh, first one, we have to regroup right away. OK. I cannot take 7 tenths away from 4 tenths, so I need to go to the ones place and regroup those ones as tenths. Now I have 14 tenths minus 7 tenths, well that'll give me 7 tenths. Bring the decimal right down, and then 0 minus 0, 0 0.7. Now remember, go ahead of me, pause me, let do all the work and come back if you're feeling confident. If not, do a couple more with me. Um, actually, let's do the hardest one on this page right now. They, they kind of work themselves up in difficulty. So 
The first one is always going to be the easiest. The last one's always going to be the hardest. So let's do, we did the easiest one together. Now let's do the hardest one together down here at F. So 361 and 31 hundredths minus, now careful on this one, because look at where the decimals are. There's three digits before the decimal on the first number. There's only one digit in front of the decimal on the second number. So that is why we love using that decimal to line things up. That means I need to place a zero on this top number. Okay, so now we can start subtracting. Well, in the thousandths place, I cannot take one thousandths over from away from zero thousandths, so I need to regroup from my hundredths. Oops, get off my highlighter, Mr. Briggs. So we're going to take from our hundredths and regroup into our thousandths. Now that I have ten thousandths minus nine thousandths, or one thousandths, I gave you the answer. Ten thousandths minus one thousandths is nine thousandths. Now I come over to the hundredths place. Can I take four hundredths away from zero hundredths? And I apologize for that zero up there. That's really a zero. No, I can't. So I again need to go to my place to the left, which is the tenths place, regroup from there, and make those into hundredths. Now I have ten hundredths minus four hundredths. I can do that. Can I take eight tenths minus two tenths? I'm sorry, I said it the wrong way. Can I take eight tenths away from two tenths? Or can I do two minus eight? No. Again, another regrouping. Regroup our ones and make them tenths. Now we have 12 tenths minus eight tenths, which gives us four tenths. Decimal comes down. Can I take two ones away from zero one? Absolutely not. So again, we look to our tens place and we regroup. 10 minus two. Now eight ones. 5 minus 0 is 5, and 3 minus 0 is 3. So our answer for this one is 350. Oh my goodness, Mr. Briggs, you're not going to fit it up there. Let's just put it to the side. 358.46. Get out of my way, Mr. 358 and 469 thousandths. Now, I would like you to pause and do B and C, and then come back and I'll have the answers for you to check. So you're going to be trying B and C on your own and then you're going to you're going to pause me, try B and C and then you'll come back and see how you did. All right, take a look at B and C and see how you did. Notice where the regroupings were on both questions and see how you did. On both of these ones we had to regroup from the ones into the tenths place. All right, let's try the next two problems, D and E, on your own. Go ahead and pause me, and when you come back, I'll have the answers, and we can look at them and check your work. All right, welcome back. Let's check it out. Hopefully you have 7 and 78 thousandths as answer for D, and then your answer for E should be 58 and 54 thousandths. Make sure that if you're checking your work that things were lined up. Notice, on all of my problems, everything is nice and lined up. That makes your brain work really, really easy. But on these ones, make sure that the decimal, on all of them I should say, make sure the decimal is lined up. That was a bad line. But make sure the decimals are lined up. You can see that when I line the decimals up, everything else lines up nicely with it. All right, let's go on to the next page. All right, this is the last section. Because I said in the concept development video, we are not doing four and five today. I want to make sure your skills of subtracting are solid. Ooh, this one is going to be a little bit more of a challenge as I'm seeing the solved problem. The directions say solve, but I see unit form. So this is what we're practicing in the concept development first. We're going to take these and we're going to convert them into standard form and we are going to subtract them. So 10 tens, 10 tens, 10 tens is actually 100. Okay, and then if it's a decimal, it would have, if it's just 10 tens, it really has zero tenths. And we're subtracting one ten and one tenth. Well, one ten is 10, one tenth. 
So we're subtracting 100 minus 10 and 1 tenth. Ooh, this is a tricky regrouping. There's a lot of zeros. Well, if we take away from our hundreds, we can give it to the tenths. And if we take from our tens and make that a nine, we can give it to our ones. And if we regroup from our ones, we can give it to our tenths. So 100 really is 99 and 10 tenths. Because when you have 10 tenths, that's one whole. So 99 plus 1 is really 100. So we're just regrouping so that we can solve this. 10 minus 1 tenth is 9 tenths. 9 minus 0 is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. You're done. So we're going to continue to try to do this for every single problem. Three. We're going to do these together unless you're feeling comfortable. Just go ahead of me. But please check your work. Three minus 22 tenths. Let me just draw a placard chart up here. I'll change colors so I can see the spots. Ones, tens, tenths, hundreds, and then thousands. Oh, missed a break. Thousands. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're thinking about 22 tenths. Uh, I think you can see it once I drew it in there. 22 tenths is really 2.2. So 3.0 is 3. We're going to minus that by 2.2. I think you can solve that one on your own. I'm going to leave that there. I'm just going to help you set up. Maybe that's what I'll do. Sorry to change it on you on the fly. But I'm going to help you set these up as standard form. Pretty sure once we press pause, or you can press pause in between and answer these. Um, but I'll help you set them up. So... At the end, you can check your work. 37 tenths. So again, if I think about 37 in the tenths place, I recognize now that that's 3.7. And we're subtracting 1, 1, and 2 tenths. Okay, so that one's set up. That one doesn't even have regrouping. That one should be pretty simple. Pause it to do it if you'd like. Now I'm going to go to D and help you set this one up. So again, I'm using, I'm going to visualize that place value chart. 8 in the 1's place, and it's saying 900. So I know there's no tenths, but there's 900's. And I'm subtracting 3.4, which would put a 0 here. There is some regrouping in the, uh, you're going to need to do from the 1's to the tenths on that one. All right, let's set this one up. 5.622 is already in standard form, but now we need to turn 3 hundredths in standard form. So there's 0 in the ones place. They say 0 tenths, or they don't say it, so we know that there's 0 tenths, but we know there's 3 hundredths. doesn't say anything about thousands, so we're just going to represent it with a 0. And now that one's set up. Go ahead and pause and try to solve it. Be careful on the regrouping. For F... Two ones, four tenths. So two in the ones place. I know the tenths come right after the ones. And I'm going to subtract zero and fifty-nine hundredths. Which means I need that extra place in the hundredths on this number, so I'll place it with a zero. All right. We have now, come on, I want a different color, set them all up. So right now I'm going to quickly do the work. Hopefully you've already completed them you were pausing as I was doing it. Now we're going to just go back and check your work, see how you did. So on this, we're starting with B. I cannot take two tenths away from zero tenths, so I need to regroup. Well, now I can do it. Ten minus two is eight. Two minus two is zero. So the answer for that one is eight tenths. On C, there's no regrouping. I can see that I can take these away without regrouping. 3 minus 1 is 2. Oops, lost my decimal point. 2.5, or 2 and 5 tenths. From the hundredths place, there's no regrouping needed. So we can solve that easily. On this next one, we cannot take 4 tenths away from 0 tenths. So let's regroup from our ones place. 10 tenths minus 4 tenths is 6 tenths. 7 ones minus 3 ones is 4 ones. The answer is 4 and 69 hundredths. We're moving on to E. 
2 minus 0 can do that one. 2 minus 3 can't do that, so I need to regroup from our tenths place to give ourselves some more hundredths to work with. 12 minus 3, 9. 5 minus 0, 5. Bring the decimal down, 5 minus 0, 5. 5.592 is the answer to that. We say it as 5 and 592 thousandths. Over here on F, um, cannot take 9 away from 0, so we need to regroup. So now that we've regrouped, 10 minus 9 is 1. 3 minus 5, can't do it. Can't take 5 away from 3, so I'm going to regroup again. 13 minus 5 is 8. Bring the decimal down. 1.81 is the answer for that. All right, so hopefully you were correcting your work as we were giving those answers. Um, and now you're going to move on to the exit ticket. Again, if you don't have the exit ticket with you at home, you're watching these videos and you can rewrite these problems to do on pencil paper. You can do the exit ticket when you come in. To solve this problem, I'm going to be sending home all of your math books, at least the problem set and exit ticket math books, so you have it home. And when you come to school, I'll have extra copies for you to work with here. That way we don't have to ever get into the situation, again, where we're forgetting to take the materials home to be successful over these distance learning days. All right? Nice job, guys. We'll see you soon. Um, lesson 12, we're going to start multiplying. So good job.